Well, the wind isn't nearly as strong today as they promised. And it's a little chilly. Uh, I think there's, despite the chilliness, I think there's a little, what happens here is we get a heat bubble over the land and it keeps the uh, wind from uh, moving in from offshore to onshore. We can see there's a lot of white caps out there right now. Let's see, can I zoom in? There we go. A lot of white caps out there. But, it's windy offshore and then we see the area of the ocean that's lighter than the other areas. So right now, the real wind is being held offshore. But the views are still stunning. There's the uh, Marin Headlands, north of the uh, Golden Gate. And one of the many little bays here. As I pan you down to the south, you can see just the tip of land that sticks out before. That little bit of land that sticks out, you go up over those hills, and then you're down in Half Moon Bay. So, overall, very pretty day. A lot of wind noise. Sounds windy, but it's not that windy. It's blowing maybe eight, as low as 8 miles an hour on up to, I've seen gusts of 15. I'd rather have 15 to 20. So, I thought in the meantime, while we waited for more wind, that I'd give you a little view of the territory. Always pretty. Uh, the wind hasn't picked up much, although you might be getting a lot of wind noise on the camera. Let me uh, check and see what we're at right now. But it's, I think, I did some preliminary experiments. I think it'll be enough to tell us. Oh, it's not too bad. It's 13.8, 13.4, 12.5 gusts coming through up to 17 so not too bad about the best we can hope for around here given the time of the year anyway so uh, the flap is currently secured uh, deflected down 45 degrees uh, give or take a degree and I put some tufts on here so that we can see what's going on with the flow and I'm going to manipulate the uh, turning vane for the slot to see how thin of a slot we can have and still have the uh, effect, effect of keeping the flow attached. You'll want to make sure that you watch all of the tufts. switch over to a GoPro camera, much wider field of view, but uh, I think you'll still be able to see the tufts well enough. Um, so from the feeler gauges, it seemed as though somewhere between an eighth of an inch and three sixteenths of an inch is just about right. So if, uh, let's see, eighth of an inch, that'd be four thirty seconds, three sixteenths, somewhere in between, about five thirty seconds of an inch for the gap. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, remove the push stick and I'm going to set that uh, flap uh, I should say the the slot turning vane I'm going to set it at 5 30 seconds of an inch uh, tape it down at the end so we don't get any bleed off the end of the uh, turning vane and uh, see what it looks like as I run through a range of angles of attack or an angles of deflection of the flap okay so here we are I got the uh, turning vane set here I have the gap preset it's not exactly straight all the way across let me see pretty close not too bad and uh, I got the danglometer here my inclinometer oh I'm running a little low on batteries here let's uh, try a quick run here while I have minimum battery available so we'll just have to guess here. We know that uh, right about here is about 45 degrees. We know this is zero. So here we are at zero. And it looks like the turning vane is acting as a bit of a trip strip. We seem to be semi-okay out here. Inboard, we're having problems. Now, with the stick gone from here, I'm not sure what that will do. So. I'm going to turn you back off for a few moments. I'm going to remove the stick and then reset that turning vane and uh, see how much of a difference that makes.
Okay, so I whittled the stick down quite a bit, rounded it off as best I could uh, to see if I could get it to stop acting as a spoiler. Let's put it at zero here. Well, that's not too bad. It's no worse than the tufts at the other end down there. Uh, mostly, you know, it's because we're operating probably at no angle of attack or close to zero. And if I lower it just, oh gosh, 10 degrees like that, we see the effect kick in. The tufts are wandering around, oh, then they go straight. So normal takeoff position is right about here. Could be here, you know, I could have it this low now. Uh, normal takeoff position, the, the flow would be uh, significantly detached uh, from the uh, flap. Uh, the flaps still work, but they're very draggy because of the detached flow. And we see here, we do see the effect here where we have the tufts by the uh, slot are uh, going nice and straight. And the ones inboard look like they do on the glider now when I put the flap down. And we can put this flap down, down, down. Here we are. We're about probably 50 here, something like that. 50 or 60. There's probably 70 right there. We still have attached flow at 70 degrees deflection. Let's go. There's about 80. And there's 90. And 90, we begin to see some separated flow again. We have to come back up here to about 80 uh, to see it attached. But 80 degrees is phenomenal. So this slotted uh, control surface with the turning vane uh, it seems to really keep the flow attached to uh, extreme deflection angles, uh, which is a cool thing. Uh, it will certainly work for the flap on my wing, and whether or not I can get the same effect to work on the elevons, I don't know, but I see no reason why it wouldn't work. So, pretty cool. How much drag is there? Additional? I don't know. I think I get rid of that stick. I gotta get a, a turning vane that's uh, molded to the appropriate shape. Here we see the effect working perfectly. We have attached flow and inboard, it's all detached. Now what's happening in front of the slot? I don't know, a bunch of mess. Uh, there's uh, clearly detached flow there. And if I get this lowered down, I guess one way to sort this out would be to just take this guy off and see what happens. So why don't we do that? We'll do it real time. No, oh, oh, my legs are getting stiff. I'm getting old and stiff. There she goes. We'll just peel it right off of here. That's the glory of using tape instead of glue. Ah, ah. Infield modifications. Now let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. That actually looks better to me. Let me just leave that, that gap open like that. And somebody wrote in and said, hey, can you put flexible stretchy fabric in there? Oh, geez, no! Uh, because anything that's stretchy, the, re the way you make it stretchy is it can have holes in it. As you stretch it out, the holes get bigger. As you let go of it, the holes get smaller. So, uh, no, no. Uh, stretchy fabric, bad plan. Stretchy fabric is not an aerodynamic surface. So... What do we do in the meantime? I don't know. Next time out, I might try a folded piece of mylar, something that is creased down the middle, attached attached on this side and on this side in the crease. And as you go full 90 like this, then it's, uh, as we go all the way down, then that piece of mylar would be stretched out straight. So you'd have, this would be down like this and the mylar would be at an angle like this. And then as you go up, the mylar closes up. And, and we see that when this gap gets relatively small like up in here it's not bad those tufts go across there and they go uh, if there's enough wind they go up and over the uh, turning vane and I think it'll be fine so maybe a folded piece of mylar might be the right answer but the thing over the top mm, I don't think so the cover on here I think that's kind of a bad plan it doesn't really work so overall the basic concept came out to prove, has been proven, now have a dimension on how wide that exit gap has to be, so I'll be able to mold a, a for real turning vein, and then we'll try out the uh, folded mylar gap. We'll come back in a few days to do that. And in the meantime, fly safe, bye for now.